What if I told you that alien technology is not just in the realm of science fiction, but potentially right under our noses? Some say governments around the world may have been collecting, studying, even reverse engineering extraterrestrial tech for decades. And what if we could trace this interaction all the way back to the Roswell incident in 1947, or perhaps even earlier? Let's delve into this fascinating world of UFOs, government secrets, and the tech that could be out of this world. Now the question that stands out like a sore thumb is, when did the government actually start collecting these unidentified flying objects? Uh, the timing seems to be a subject of considerable debate, with some pointing as far back as the early 20th century. However, the watershed moment that brought UFOs into the public eye was undoubtedly the infamous Roswell incident of 1947. After the alleged crash of a UFO near Roswell, New Mexico, many UFO researchers and enthusiasts believe that the US government initiated a concerted effort to recover and study extraterrestrial technology. This is where things get murky. Official records deny the presence of any extraterrestrial artifact, explaining the incident as the crash of a high-altitude surveillance balloon. However, theorists and witnesses insist that there was a cover-up. The years that followed the Roswell incident saw an increase in reported UFO sightings, not just in the US but around the globe. Many believe this marked the beginning of covert government programs designed to acquire, study and potentially reverse engineer extraterrestrial technology. Through the Cold War and the space race right into the 21st century, the narrative of governmental involvement with UFOs and potential alien technology has persisted. Enter Philip J. Corso, a name synonymous with the most famous alleged UFO incident in history. The Roswell Incident of 1947, Corso, a former U.S. Army colonel, shook the world with his claims in the book The Day After Roswell. According to Corso, he was entrusted with foreign technology recovered from the Roswell crash. He alleged that the U.S. government had reverse-engineered this technology and then seeded it into the private sector, with Corso playing a pivotal role in the process. But what exactly was this foreign technology? Corso described artifacts such as a thin, clear material like plastic, reminiscent of the integrated circuits used in our modern computers. He also wrote of fiber optics, lasers, super tenacity fibers that led to the development of Kevlar and other advanced technology that was apparently far beyond human capability at the time. He even claimed that the Roswell craft itself was a kind of lifeboat for the alien crew and was designed to interface with them directly. Now, that's a thought to send chills down your spine, isn't it? A spaceship not just controlled by the creatures, but an actual part of them. However, skeptics have challenged Corso's claims, pointing to discrepancies in his accounts and citing the rapid pace of human technological advancement as a more plausible explanation for these innovations. But Corso's tale is just one piece of the puzzle. Let's dive deeper, shall we? Now, you might be thinking, if this is all true, why doesn't the government just come out and say it? Well, believe it or not, they kind of have. Over the past few years, government agencies, particularly in the United States, have been more forthcoming about the UFO phenomenon. In 2020, the US Department of Defense officially released three short videos showing unidentified aerial phenomena. These were captured by Navy pilots during training flights between 2004 and 2015. Each of the videos showcases fast-moving, oblong objects racing through the sky and performing maneuvers that seem to defy our understanding of physics. The government's acknowledgement of these videos as real, unidentified objects is a big deal. It's the closest we've come to an official admission that there are things in our skies that our best military and scientific minds can't explain. Then, there's the Pentagon's UAP task force, established in 2020 with a mandate to investigate sightings of unexplained aerial vehicles by military personnel. So while they're not saying, hey, we've got aliens, they're certainly saying, hey, there's something weird in the sky and we don't know what it is. But this acknowledgement doesn't tell us what these unidentified objects are where they come from, or who, or what, is controlling them. But it's a step towards transparency that was unthinkable even a decade ago. Could it be possible that this is a slow, calculated strategy to prepare us for something bigger, to acclimate us to the reality of the unknown? Perhaps. But for now, we're left with more questions than answers. So, let's explore further. After all, the best is yet to come. But how long have governments been aware of this alien phenomenon? 
and when did contact supposedly occur? Let's delve into that. According to some researchers and theorists, contact with extraterrestrial life may have started much earlier than we think. Reports of sightings and encounters date back centuries, with many ancient civilizations attributing their advancements to the sky gods. But when we talk about modern times, things start to get a bit more concrete, albeit still largely speculative. Some theorists point to the events of 1947 in Roswell, New Mexico as a significant turning point. They claim that a crash involving an extraterrestrial spacecraft occurred and that the US government recovered debris and even alien bodies. If this is true, then governments have been in contact with alien technology and potentially aliens themselves for over seven decades. But perhaps more interestingly, some whistleblowers and researchers argue that direct purposeful contact has been established between humans and extraterrestrial beings. Former Canadian Minister of Defence Paul Hellyer publicly stated in 2005 that not only do UFOs exist, but that governments have been in direct contact with extraterrestrials for many years. He even goes so far as to say that at least four species of aliens have been visiting Earth for thousands of years. Similar claims have been made by others, suggesting that this contact has resulted in a wealth of shared technology and knowledge, much of which remains top secret. If these assertions are correct, then we are dealing with a global, multi-generational cover-up, with implications that would shake our society to its very core. But why would the government keep such world-altering information secret? Well, let's take a look at some potential reasons. Now, let's talk about possibilities. What are the potential technologies we could imagine extraterrestrial beings to have? And which of these might governments potentially have access to? For starters, let's consider the obvious, spacecraft technology. We're not just talking about sleek aerodynamic designs that defy gravity. These technologies could potentially involve manipulation of space-time itself. Ideas such as warp drives, teleportation devices and wormhole generators are all part of this speculative discussion. If such technologies are within the grasp of extraterrestrial civilizations, it could explain the seemingly impossible maneuvers reported in many UFO sightings. Then there's energy technology. It's no secret that we're facing an energy crisis on Earth, but an advanced alien civilization may have already solved this issue. Technologies that allow for harnessing energy from stars, otherwise known as Dyson spheres or Dyson swarms, or even directly tapping into the fabric of space-time for limitless energy, are all within the realm of theoretical possibility. And what about medical technology? Some abductees claim to have been healed or altered by their alien captors. Could we see advanced medical equipment capable of rapidly healing injuries, curing diseases, or even halting the aging process? But perhaps most interesting is the possibility of communication and information technology that could provide access to an interstellar internet, connecting civilizations across the galaxy or even the universe. This could potentially give us access to a wealth of knowledge beyond anything we've ever imagined. Of course, these are all speculative. We're still waiting on solid proof. But if even one of these technologies is real and within our reach, it could entirely reshape our civilization. And here's where things get a little tricky. You might be wondering, if the government does have such revolutionary technology, why keep it hidden? There are a few theories, really, for starters. Any new technology that offers a significant strategic advantage is likely to be kept secret, especially in the context of national security. If these technologies can be weaponized, it would be natural for governments to want to prevent them from falling into the wrong hands. Moreover, disclosure could lead to social, economic and religious upheaval. Imagine the societal impact of realizing we're not alone in the universe or the economic consequences of introducing free, limitless energy. We could be looking at a complete restructuring of power and wealth, something those currently in power might not be too keen on. Then there's the potential for panic. In 1938, a radio broadcast of H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds led to widespread fear among listeners who believed an actual alien invasion was underway. This incident has often been cited as an example of the mass hysteria that could result from the sudden revelation of extraterrestrial existence. Finally, consider that the governments might be suppressing the information not for our protection, but because they're being instructed to by the extraterrestrials themselves. 
Maybe the aliens don't believe we're ready for such revelations, or they might have their own reasons for wanting to stay in the shadows. All in all, these considerations paint a complex picture of the potential reasons for the suppression of alien technology. But remember, these are just theories. Until there is official disclosure, we can only speculate, conjecture, and ask ourselves, what if? So, there you have it. Philip J. Corso's detailed assertions about back-engineering alien tech from Roswell and the intriguing timelines of government interactions with UFOs. Could it be that we've had access to interstellar technology for decades? And if so, what's been holding back the big reveal? Food for thought, isn't it? Have you ever wondered how we made such monumental leaps in technology in such a short span of time? From the silicon-based integrated circuit chips that drive our digital world to the Kevlar that protects lives daily, our technological prowess has soared. But what if I told you there might be more to it? What if some of our revolutionary inventions were not solely the result of human ingenuity, but were rather gifted to us by extraterrestrial entities? Let's explore this fascinating and controversial theory. It's hard to understate just how revolutionary the transistor was for modern technology. These tiny devices, which can amplify or switch electronic signals and electrical power, are everywhere. They are the building blocks of all our modern digital devices, from computers to smartphones, all the way to our most advanced supercomputers. In short, they have defined the digital age. The origins of the transistor, however, are the subject of some debate. Officially, the invention is attributed to three American physicists at Bell Labs, John Bardeen, Walter Bratain, and William Shockley, who shared the 1956 Nobel Prize in Physics for their invention. They certainly did the hard scientific work, painstakingly researching semiconductors and experimenting with germanium and silicon to eventually create the first point-contact transistor in 1947. However, those who propose that the transistor was reverse-engineered from alien technology point to a curious coincidence. The development and subsequent patenting of the transistor occurred shortly after the infamous Roswell incident in 1947, when a UFO is said to have crashed in New Mexico. The timing has led some to suggest that the rapid development of the transistor was spurred by reverse-engineering technology recovered from the crash. Supporters of this theory point out that the transistor represented a massive leap forward in technology, seemingly appearing out of nowhere. They argue that such a major advancement seems unlikely without some form of external input, in this case, extraterrestrial technology. Detractors, however, contend that the development of the transistor was a natural evolution of our understanding of physics and electronics, building upon years of prior research. The truth, as always, may lie somewhere in between. Whether spurred by human ingenuity, alien tech, or a combination of both, the transistor's impact on our world is undeniable. Another technological marvel that is often suggested to be a product of alien reverse engineering is Kevlar, a high-strength material best known for its use in bulletproof vests. Kevlar is five times stronger than steel, yet it's also lightweight, making it ideal for personal protective equipment, as well as a host of other industrial applications. The creation of Kevlar is officially attributed to Polish-American chemist Stephanie Kwolek, who was working for the DuPont Company in the 1960s. Her work in liquid crystalline polymers led to the accidental discovery of Kevlar's incredible strength and durability. But what if there's more to this story? In the world of UFO lore, there are theories that suggest Kevlar's origins might not be as straightforward as they seem. Some posit that Kevlar's creation might have been guided directly or indirectly, by access to alien technology. According to this theory, studying alien technology could have propelled our understanding of materials science forward, leading to the development of Kevlar. How might this have worked? Well, if we consider the supposed crash of a UFO near Roswell, New Mexico, in 1947, it suggested that the debris recovered was made of a material that was both incredibly light and nearly indestructible. Such characteristics are strikingly similar to Kevlar's. Could Quolex research have been influenced by insights gained from studying this wreckage? This doesn't stop enthusiasts from speculating, however, as it's a tantalizing idea to think that our modern technology might have otherworldly origins. After all, the gap between science fiction and science fact can sometimes be surprisingly narrow. Given the alleged secrecy surrounding reverse engineering alien technology, it's no surprise that identifying the exact locations where this process supposedly occurs is challenging. 
However, there are a few sites frequently mentioned by those who follow the trail of extraterrestrial tech. One name that almost always comes up in discussions of reverse engineering. Alien technology is Area 51. Located in the remote Nevada desert, Area 51 has been the subject of UFO and alien theories for decades. Bob Lazar, a physicist who claims to have worked at a sublocation of Area 51 known as S-4, has stated that he worked on reverse engineering alien spacecraft there. If Lazar's accounts are accurate, Area 51 could very well be a hub for such clandestine operations. In addition to Area 51, there are mentions of other secretive military and research facilities in the US and around the world. Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, for instance, is often associated with the Roswell incident. It's thought that wreckage from the crashed UFO was transported there for study. Overseas, Kapustin Yar, often referred to as Russia's Area 51, is rumored to have been involved in similar operations. Located in Astrakhan Oblast, Near the Kazakhstan border, the military base has been shrouded in secrecy since its establishment by the Soviet Union in 1946. Then there's Pine Gap in Australia, a joint US-Australian satellite surveillance base. Some believe that Pine Gap may also be involved in reverse engineering extraterrestrial tech, based on its high level of secrecy and strategic importance to the US military. Bob Lazar, a figure synonymous with Area 51 and alien technology, once claimed to work at a site called S-4, located a short distance south of the infamous Nevada base. But Lazar's job wasn't your run-of-the-mill government gig. As per his account, he was tasked with reverse engineering extraterrestrial technology. Lazar, a physicist by training, allegedly worked with a team to understand and potentially replicate the propulsion systems of nine different spacecraft that he claimed were of extraterrestrial origin. He stated that these crafts employed a technology that harnessed gravity itself, using a substance Lazar referred to as Element 115, which was unknown to science at the time of his claims. Element 115, or Moscovium as it is now known, was officially recognized by the scientific community years later in 2003. However, it doesn't possess the properties that Lazar attributed to it, adding a layer of controversy to his claims. Within the labyrinth of the S-4 facility, as Lazar described, were nine hangar-like doors built into the side of a mountain, each one a storehouse for alien spacecraft. In one instance, Lazar recounted a moment where he was allowed to step inside one of these vehicles, dubbed the Sport Model. He described it as a seamless metallic object, both remarkable and eerie in its otherworldly simplicity. Lazar's claims are often met with skepticism, especially as no concrete evidence has been provided to back up his story. Government records of his education and employment were also seemingly non-existent, making it even harder for many to believe his tales. Yet, his detailed account continues to capture the imagination of those intrigued by the potential for human interaction with extraterrestrial technology. So, does S-4 house the secrets of alien engineering, or is it merely the epicenter of a well-spun myth? As is often the case when dealing with stories of this nature, the truth remains elusive. Yet, the questions posed and the fascination stoked by these tales keep the discussion of alien technology alive and thriving. Philip J. Corso, a name that rings quite familiar in the realm of ufology and extraterrestrial encounters, claimed to have direct knowledge of the government's secretive endeavors into alien technology. His controversial book, The Day After Roswell, sent shockwaves through the scientific and ufological communities, becoming a cornerstone for those who believe in the conspiracy of government suppression of alien technology. According to Corso, a retired U.S. Army colonel, he was directly involved in the research and development program that reverse-engineered alien technology retrieved from the infamous Roswell crash in 1947. He alleges that he was assigned to a Pentagon project under the command of Lieutenant General Arthur Trudeau, whose task was to filter Roswell technology into the mainstream through defense contractors without raising public awareness about the alien origins of the tech. Among the technologies Corso claimed to have worked on were integrated circuit chips, fiber optics, and lasers technologies that have since revolutionized our lives in ways we couldn't imagine in the pre-Roswell era. He argued that these advances were not simply the result of human progress, but were significantly accelerated by the study of alien tech. 
Corso also claimed that night vision technology was developed through the reverse engineering of alien optical systems. He proposed that extraterrestrial entities had superior night vision, which humans tried to replicate by examining the biomechanics of retrieved alien eyes. Critics have challenged Corso's assertions due to the lack of documented proof and the convenient timing of his revelations, coming forth many decades after the purported events. But the startling specificity of his claims continues to ignite interest and debate. True or not, Corso's accounts continue to add fuel to the conversation surrounding the possibilities of reverse-engineered alien technology and its implications for our understanding of human technological development. And as always, thanks for watching. It's indeed intriguing to consider how our technological advancements could be intertwined with extraterrestrial phenomena. From alleged facilities like Area 51 and S4, to claims made by people like Bob Lazar and Philip J. Corso, the stories and theories around alien tech are never-ending. The skies above us have been a source of wonder and mystery since time immemorial. And within that cosmic expanse, there have been sightings, incidents, phenomena that don't fit neatly into our understanding of the world. Incidents that suggest we might not be alone. UFO crashes. They're a staple of science fiction and the fodder of conspiracy theories. But what happens when these crashes are reported in real life? Are they hoaxes, misinterpretations, or could they be genuine encounters with extraterrestrial technology? Today, we'll take a journey through some of the most notable purported UFO crash incidents and the intriguing theories surrounding them. Our journey begins in the summer of 1947 in the quiet town of Roswell, New Mexico. The nearby desert landscape was disrupted when an unidentified flying object crashed into the barren soil. What unfolded after is a narrative of intrigue that continues to fuel discussions to this day. Rancher W.W. Mac Brazel discovered the wreckage, which was unlike anything he had ever seen. It was made of a thin, lightweight material that Brazel described as a sort of metal foil. He could crumple it and it would unfold itself, retaining its original shape. The local military base, Roswell Army Airfield, initially reported the recovery of a flying disc, only to retract the statement a day later, claiming it was a simple weather balloon that had crashed. But this quick change in narrative sparked curiosity and suspicion. Could it have been a cover-up? Several witnesses later came forward decades after the incident. They claimed they saw not only the wreckage of a disc-shaped craft, but also the bodies of its otherworldly occupants. Jesse Marcel, the intelligence officer who first investigated and recovered some of the wreckage, later openly disputed the weather balloon explanation. He claimed the materials he found were not of this world. The Roswell incident is perhaps the most famous and thoroughly investigated UFO crash in history. It has become the cornerstone of UFO conspiracy theories and has inspired countless books, movies and TV shows. But despite all the interest and investigation, the question remains, what really happened in Roswell in the summer of 1947? The truth, as they say, may still be out there. Next, let's travel to Kecksburg, Pennsylvania. On the evening of December 9, 1965, a fireball was reported by thousands in at least six U.S. states and Ontario, Canada. It streaked over the Detroit, Michigan, Windsor, Canada area, reportedly dropped hot metal debris over Michigan and northern Ohio, and caused sonic booms in western Pennsylvania. It was generally assumed and reported by the press to be a meteor. However, inhabitants of Kecksburg had a different story to tell. Eyewitnesses in the small village described something crashing in the woods, a large, brilliant fireball in the sky. But this was no ordinary meteor. Residents reported a strange acorn-shaped object about the size of a small car. The strange object was adorned with mysterious hieroglyphic-like characters etched into its metallic surface. The military was on the scene quickly, cordoning off the area and removing the object on a flatbed truck under the cover of darkness. Officially, they later reported they found absolutely nothing in the woods. But this quick response and the subsequent secrecy only fueled the rumors of a government cover-up. In the following years, numerous theories have surfaced about the Kecksburg incident. Some suggest it was a crashed Soviet satellite, others claim it was an extraterrestrial spacecraft, and some even believe it was an experimental Nazi de-glocker device from the WW2 somehow displaced in time. 
While no definitive conclusion has been reached, the Kecksburg incident continues to intrigue ufologists and conspiracy theorists alike. The truth behind this event remains as elusive as the object itself, a mystery concealed within the shadows of the unknown. The Shag Harbor incident, which took place on October 4, 1967 in Nova Scotia, Canada, is another notable UFO crash that has puzzled investigators for decades. This particular incident stands out due to its multiple credible witnesses and an official government acknowledgement that something unexplained indeed happened. On that fateful night, residents reported seeing a sequence of flashing lights in the sky, which were moving in a downward trajectory. These lights eventually hit the water's surface and appeared to float, prompting some witnesses to believe they were seeing a tragic airplane crash. Local authorities were quickly alerted, and a rescue mission was launched under the assumption that an aircraft had crashed into the sea. But when boats arrived at the scene, there was no wreckage, no bodies, and no survivors. Instead, they found a long, yellow foam on the water, a sign that something unusual had occurred. The Canadian military became involved, and an underwater search was initiated. Still, no aircraft wreckage was found, and the case was handed off to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and the Canadian Coast Guard. They classified it as a UFO report, the only unsolved case in Canada officially classified as a UFO. Over the years, the Shag Harbour incident has provoked numerous theories. Some believe it was a secret military operation, while others propose it was an extraterrestrial craft. Some witnesses even reported seeing a second craft in the sky, seemingly looking for the first one. Despite extensive investigations, including by civilian UFO groups, the true nature of the Shag Harbour incident remains a mystery. It's an enigma that continues to fuel speculation and interest, keeping the incident very much alive in the annals of UFO history. If we're exploring UFO crash incidents, we mustn't overlook the Berwyn Mountain incident in Wales in 1974. This event involves an alleged crash of an unidentified flying object in the Berwyn Mountains. The mystery deepens with the claim of a subsequent military cover-up, which has fueled a lot of speculation over the years. On the night of January 23, 1974, residents in the nearby village of Llandrillo reported a loud explosion and earth tremors. The local community was understandably alarmed, believing they had experienced an earthquake. Many also reported seeing strange lights in the sky moving towards the mountain range. The initial official explanation was that the tremors were caused by an earthquake measuring 3.5 on the Richter scale. However, locals were convinced that the tremors were caused by something crashing into the mountains. This belief was fueled by reports of a significant military presence in the area in the days following the event leading many to believe that something was being covered up. Over the years, the theories around the Berwyn Mountain incident have ranged from crashed UFOs to secretive military operations. Some believe that an extraterrestrial craft crashed and that the military quickly moved in to retrieve the wreckage and any possible occupants. Others propose that the event was a result of a secretive military experiment gone wrong. Despite numerous requests for information, the UK government has released very little documentation about the incident. This lack of information has only added to the intrigue surrounding the event. Even today, the Berwyn Mountain incident is a focal point for UFO enthusiasts and conspiracy theorists alike, making it one of the most enduring UFO mysteries in the UK. Let's move our focus to the other side of the globe, to a place called Dalnogorsk in the Soviet Union. In the chilly winter evening of January 29, 1986, locals reported a strange reddish sphere flying towards a hill known as Height 611. The object supposedly crashed into the hill, sparking a fire that lasted for hours. The Height 611 incident is unique because of the immediate and extensive research conducted by Soviet scientists in the aftermath. A team led by Dr. Valery Dvuzhilny from the Far Eastern Academy of Sciences gathered samples from the crash site just two days later. What they found was peculiar. The site was littered with tiny rock-like particles, metallic in nature, and also unusual black glassy beads. Analysis of these beads revealed them to be almost entirely composed of lead and iron silicate. But it was the way these elements were combined that was unusual. They were structured in a way not typical for naturally occurring minerals or human-made materials. This led the researchers to believe that the object was likely not of earthly origin. 
Additionally, the trees around the crash site were also affected. They appeared to have been exposed to high heat levels, causing burn damage, but strangely, there was no evidence of a conventional explosion. This further added to the mystery. Despite thorough investigations, what crashed into Height 611 remains a mystery. The unusual nature of the debris and the lack of conventional explanations have led many to believe that this was indeed a UFO crash. Yet, like most UFO incidents, official explanations are scarce and typically dismissive of the extraterrestrial hypothesis. Nevertheless, for many, the Height 611 incident remains a strong piece of evidence in support of the existence of UFOs. How about we step into the time machine and head to the late 19th century, specifically April 17, 1897, in the small town of Aurora, Texas. The event in question predates the Roswell incident by a good half-century, and it's one of the earliest reported UFO crashes. According to local newspaper reports from the time, an airship was seen by several witnesses as it swerved over the town square, then crashed into a windmill on the property of a judge, J.S. Proctor. The explosion that followed destroyed the windmill and the water tank and scattered debris across several acres of ground. But here's where it gets truly bizarre. The townsfolk allegedly discovered a badly disfigured body, which they assumed was the ship's pilot. The body, described as not an inhabitant of this world, was buried with Christian rites in the local cemetery. Reports claimed that the wreckage from the crash site had strange hieroglyphic-like symbols. In the 1970s, the case was reinvestigated by UFO researchers. They claimed to locate the grave and even applied to exhume the site, but the request was denied. Metal fragments were found in the area which were claimed to be remnants of the UFO, but the results of the analysis were inconclusive. The Aurora case is often dismissed as a hoax, primarily because the town was suffering from a severe economic downturn, and some suggest that the story was concocted to revive interest in the area. But without definitive proof, it remains an intriguing piece of UFO history that continues to fuel speculation about early extraterrestrial visits to Earth. We've journeyed through a landscape of mystery and speculation, diving into numerous accounts of supposed UFO crashes. From Roswell to the Berwyn Mountains, these incidents have spurred countless theories, debates and investigations. While it's easy to dismiss these stories as mere fabrications or misunderstandings, they do serve a crucial role in fueling our curiosity about what lies beyond our planet. They remind us that the universe is vast, and there's so much we don't yet understand. What if I told you we could bend time like a piece of wire, or gaze into tomorrow as easily as looking out a window? Sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, right? Well, brace yourself for a journey into the uncharted territories of Project Looking Glass and Project Galileo, top-secret endeavors that, if the rumors are to be believed, sought to do just that and more. Grab your curiosity hats as we step into a realm where time travel might not just be a fragment of our imaginations. Project Looking Glass sounds like something straight out of a science fiction novel. But what if I told you it might be real? Or at least according to some conspiracy theories and testimonies it might be. Reportedly developed in secret U.S. government facilities, Project Looking Glass allegedly involves the use of advanced technologies for viewing future and past events. Speculation swirls around this project, with theories proposing that it uses quantum physics and highly sophisticated optical devices to distort gravity and light, thereby bending the space-time continuum. Supposedly, this allows the users to peer into different points in time. Such a device, if real, would have profound implications for our understanding of reality itself. Bob Lazar, an alleged former Area 51 employee, has vaguely referenced such technology, further fueling speculation. However, it's crucial to note that no credible evidence has been publicly produced to substantiate these astonishing claims. Without verifiable proof, the story of Project Looking Glass remains firmly in the realm of speculation. But the tantalizing question remains, what if it's true? What would that mean for us, for our understanding of time, and indeed for our place in the universe? The prospect is as tantalizing as it is mind-boggling. When we talk about Project Looking Glass, one name often comes up in the discussion, Bob Lazar. A controversial figure in the world of ufology, Lazar claims to have worked on reverse engineering extraterrestrial technology at a site called S4, near the infamous Area 51 in Nevada, 
According to Lazar, one of the projects he was involved with had technology that bears a striking resemblance to what's described in Project Looking Glass. While he hasn't explicitly confirmed working on this particular project, his descriptions of an alien craft that could manipulate gravity to propel itself certainly seem to align with the supposed objectives of Project Looking Glass. Lazar describes the technology as using gravity as a lens, much like how traditional lenses use light refraction, bending it to focus on a specific point. He further elaborates that this technology could manipulate the gravity A and B waves, which, in the hands of advanced beings or societies, could potentially be used for time viewing or even time travel. The concept of time travel has fascinated humans for centuries, but it wasn't until Albert Einstein's theories of relativity in the early 20th century that the concept moved from the realm of fantasy to a theoretical possibility. The idea, in essence, is based on how space and time intermingle, coining the term space-time. Einstein's theory of relativity posits that gravity is not a force transmitted across space, as Isaac Newton had suggested, but a curvature of space-time caused by massive objects. So when a massive object like a star or planet curves space-time, anything passing by, including light, follows this curvature. This is known as gravity's effect on time, or gravitational time dilation, observed in experiments where clocks closer to a massive object, like the Earth, tick slower compared to those further away. Extending this idea to Project Looking Glass, if you have a technology that can manipulate gravity, then you could, in theory, manipulate time. By creating a strong gravitational field, you could slow time down, or by creating a negative gravitational field, you could potentially reverse time. This falls into the domain of hypothetical exotic matter and negative energy densities, which are required for notions like wormholes, shortcuts through space-time frequently used in discussions about time travel and faster-than-light travel. A Project Galileo isn't about peering into the future, like Project Looking Glass. Instead, it's focused on exploring the vast, mysterious expanse of space, specifically the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. But why Jupiter, you might ask? The reason lies in the intrigue that Jupiter's moons hold, with a particular emphasis on the moon Europa. Project Galileo, named after the famous Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei, was an ambitious endeavor launched by NASA in 1989. Galileo the spacecraft was designed to study Jupiter and its moons in unprecedented detail. It arrived at Jupiter in 1995 after a lengthy journey involving gravitational assists, also known as slingshots around Venus and Earth. The primary mission objectives were to explore Jupiter's atmosphere magnetosphere and to study the chemical composition, geology, and the extraordinary possibility of subsurface oceans on its moons. Over the course of 14 years, including its journey to Jupiter and its extended missions, Galileo made several groundbreaking discoveries. One of the most compelling findings was the discovery of a salty, subsurface ocean on Europa, making it a prime candidate for potential extraterrestrial life within our own solar system. That's right, a moon that could potentially harbor life, not millions of light years away, but within our own cosmic neighborhood. Project Galileo, despite its immense scientific value, has been a subject of various conspiracy theories and speculations. Some individuals believe that its true purpose was not just to explore the Jovian system, but to gather technology from an extraterrestrial source. There's a fascinating thread of thought that suggests that the spacecraft was not just sent for exploration and discovery, but was also a scavenging mission. The theory alleges that Jupiter's moon Europa could potentially house ancient extraterrestrial technology beneath its icy surface. The source of such speculation is often attributed to the supposed secrecy and specific interest that NASA seemed to have on Europa. Now, what kind of technology could possibly be buried beneath the icy surface of Europa, a moon so far from Earth? The conjecture suggests anything from energy sources much more efficient and sustainable than we currently have to technological artifacts that could change our understanding of the universe and our place within it. It's a thought that is as tantalizing as it is terrifying. To add another layer to the intrigue, some of these theories even extend to the notion that governments and organizations like NASA are reverse engineering this alien technology, fueling advancements in various fields. This is a bold claim, often lacking concrete evidence, yet has gripped many a curious mind. 
painting a picture of a reality straight out of a science fiction novel. So, what would the alleged discoveries from Project Galileo imply for us for our world and our understanding of the cosmos? Let's assume, just for the sake of our conversation, that the theories about a secret alien technology scavenging mission are true. What are the potential implications? Firstly, the discovery of any form of extraterrestrial technology would profoundly shift our understanding of life in the universe. It would not only confirm the existence of other technologically advanced civilizations, but also give us a glimpse into the kind of advancements possible in the universe. Such a revelation would carry monumental implications for our search for extraterrestrial intelligence, or CT, and could potentially lead to an entirely new era of space exploration and discovery. Secondly, the presence of alien technology on Europa could potentially suggest that, at some point in the distant past, this moon of Jupiter was either visited or inhabited by an advanced civilization. This could mean that the icy surface and oceans of Europa might not just hold secrets of alien technology, but also signs of past or even present extraterrestrial life. Thirdly, if the theories about reverse engineering this alien technology are accurate, we could be looking at a future where current technological barriers are broken, leading to unprecedented advancements. Imagine energy sources more potent and cleaner than anything we've ever known. Space travel technologies that could take us to the furthest corners of the universe and scientific tools that could allow us to manipulate the very fabric of reality. Finally, and perhaps most disquietingly, if the allegations about the secrecy of Project Galileo's true mission hold any weight, it would raise significant questions about the transparency of our space exploration initiatives and the motives behind them. In essence, it would redefine the narrative of space exploration and the role of secrecy in scientific advancements. Of course, all of this is pure conjecture and exploration of what-ifs. Until we have solid evidence in our hands, such narratives remain confined to the realm of speculation. But as always, it's the questions that lead us forward that push us to explore and discover, and perhaps one day unravel the mysteries that the universe holds. We've danced on the edges of science fiction and reality, ventured into secret projects and explored the possibility of warping time and space. Yet as always in the realm of the unexplained and the extraordinary, we leave with more questions. And that's just fine, because questions push us to discover, to explore and to keep turning the page. Hello there, picture this. A bustling airport with planes taking off and landing, travelers rushing to catch flights, and in its depths, a secret society of reptiles yes you heard that right we're going to dive into one of the most interesting and bizarre conspiracy theories out there the denver airport reptiles but first let's address the elephant in the room why on earth would an airport have barbed wire fences facing inwards it's quite a puzzling sight and one that has stirred quite a bit of controversy normally fences are designed to keep people out right but what happens when they are designed to keep people in now, this is where things get a little... strange. At the Denver airport, one thing that has consistently puzzled visitors and fueled conspiracy theories is the orientation of the barbed wire on the fences. Instead of being designed to deter people from breaking in, as you would expect, the barbed wire is angled inward, as if to prevent people from getting out. Conspiracy theorists have jumped on this anomaly, with some claiming it's evidence of a secret underground prison or concentration camp operated by the government or perhaps our supposed reptilian overlords. They argue that the inward-facing fences are a clear indication of the airport's sinister purpose, to detain, not to deter. But those in charge of the airport offer a more mundane explanation. They argue that the inward-facing fences are simply a measure to prevent large animals, such as deer, from wandering onto the runways, which could potentially lead to dangerous accidents. Yet, for those who believe in the Denver airport conspiracies, this explanation is seen as a convenient cover-up. The question remains, are these fences an innocent measure of wildlife control or a more insidious tool of containment? As always, the answer depends on who you ask. Denver International Airport, or DIA, is more than just a hub for travelers from around the globe. This intriguing location has earned quite a reputation. It's often referred to as the conspiracy capital of the world, and for good reason. You see, the airport was built in 1995, replacing Denver's Stapleton Airport, which, by all accounts, was still functioning perfectly well. 
This raised eyebrows, particularly because the new DIA was significantly larger and seemingly unnecessary, but things get even stranger. The initial budget for DIA was around $1.7 billion, but the final cost skyrocketed to nearly $4.8 billion, a whopping $3.1 billion over the original budget. This massive overrun sparked a flurry of questions. Why was the budget exceeded by such a massive amount? And where did all that money go, adding to the intrigue the airport's dedication stone credits an organization called the New World Airport Commission for its help in building the airport? However, there's no record of such an organization existing. This gave rise to speculation that New World could be a reference to the New World Order, a secret society that, according to conspiracy theorists, aims to establish an authoritarian world government. The construction of the airport also required massive amounts of earth moving, which created a system of tunnels and multi-level underground structures. According to the airport's official explanation, these were intended for a high-speed automated baggage handling system that never actually worked. However, some conspiracy theorists have proposed that these subterranean levels serve a far more sinister purpose, and this is where our reptilian friends enter the scene. Now let's take a detour into the world of the bizarre and the unexplained, the reptilian theory. The idea, popularized by conspiracy theorist David Icke, posits that shape-shifting reptilian aliens control Earth by taking on human form and gaining political power to manipulate our societies. Sounds like something right out of a sci-fi movie, right? But here's the connection to Denver Airport. Some theorists believe that the underground tunnels and multi-level structures beneath the airport serve as a secret base for these reptilian overlords. The airport's capacious underground area, the size of Manhattan, they claim, provides ample room for a hidden city, or rather, a hidden reptilian lair. And while we're down here in the basement of conjecture, let's add another layer to this conspiracy cake. Some proponents of the reptilian theory also suggest that the alleged subterranean city is not just a lair, but a massive covert genetics lab. Here, they say, human and reptilian DNA are combined to produce hybrid beings that walk among us, undetected. Naturally, these theories are met with a healthy dose of skepticism by most, but that doesn't stop the speculation. And it's not just the underground structure that has caught the attention of conspiracy theorists. There are many more elements of DIA that raise eyebrows and fuel the belief in the extraordinary. And now we enter the basement, or should we say the supposed labyrinthine network of underground tunnels that exist beneath the Denver airport. If you believe the theories, these are not just your regular baggage handling and maintenance tunnels, but rather, they are home to our elusive reptilian overlords. The belief in reptilian beings controlling Earth is not new. It's a common thread in many conspiracy theories, with some alleging that these creatures are a superior alien species, or perhaps even a subterranean race that has lived on Earth far longer than us humans. In the case of Denver Airport, theorists suggest that the airport was built as a cover for the construction of a massive underground base. This base is, according to them, where the reptilian beings live, work, and perhaps orchestrate their global control strategies. They point to the unusually large amount of soil, 110 million cubic yards to be precise, that was moved during the airport's construction. Could this have been to accommodate the creation of this subterranean city? Again, officials offer a more rational explanation. The soil was moved to build the airport's runway system. But for those ingrained in conspiracy law, this is seen as another cover-up, a smokescreen to hide the true purpose of the airport. So is there a vast subterranean network harboring a race of reptilian beings under Denver Airport? As with all things, the truth might be stranger than fiction, or perhaps it might be exactly as mundane as officials insist. Either way, it's a fascinating journey into the world of conspiracy theories and our own human imagination. Art, as they say, is a reflection of society, a mirror held up to the world. But what if the mirror shows us something unexpected, something cryptic? Denver Airport is home to some intriguing and to some unsettling artwork. The most notable of these is a series of murals painted by artist Leo Tanguma. They depict scenes of environmental decay, war and genocide, but also scenes of restoration and peace. While Tanguma has explained that the murals are a commentary on humanity's capacity for destruction and hope for a better future, conspiracy theorists have their own interpretations. To them, these murals are not simple artistic expressions, 
but coded messages or even prophecies about a dystopian future orchestrated by the global elite, or, in this case, our reptilian overlords. Some theories suggest the murals depict a new world order taking over the Earth after some cataclysmic event. Another notable piece of art is a 32-foot-tall blue horse statue with glowing red eyes, affectionately known as Blucifer. The statue's eerie appearance has led to speculation about its intended symbolism, with theories ranging from it being a representation of the fourth horseman of the apocalypse to it being a symbol of the reptilian's power and influence. Interestingly, the artist of the statue, Luis Jimenez, was killed when a section of the sculpture fell on him during construction. This unfortunate event has only served to fuel the conspiracies surrounding the airport's artworks. But is there a hidden meaning in these artworks, a message to be decoded? Or is it just art, meant to provoke thought and discussion? The answer, like many things at Denver Airport, remains shrouded in mystery. Finally, let's gaze into the future. Denver International Airport, despite, or perhaps because of, uh, all the conspiracy theories, has become a cultural icon, and the airport authorities aren't shying away from it. In fact, they're embracing the theories, turning them into a marketing tool, and using them to fuel intrigue and tourism. In 2016, the airport even held a month-long exhibit on the conspiracy theories, complete with a talking gargoyle that joked with travellers about the airport's supposed secrets. The airport's official website has a section dedicated to debunking the rumours, but it does so with a wink, maintaining the sense of mystery. They've also used the theories in construction signs when the airport was undergoing renovations, signs reading construction or cover-up, and what's happening behind this wall, gargoyle breeding ground, Top secret Freemason meeting appeared around the airport. Far from quashing the rumours, these actions have only added fuel to the fire. So what does the future hold for the Denver airport conspiracy theories? As long as there's an airport with unusual art, mysterious symbols and a complex network of underground tunnels, it seems there will always be someone wondering what really lies beneath. And isn't that the beauty of human curiosity? The quest for answers, the yearning for truth, the lure of the unknown, it's all part of the journey. In the end, the Denver airport and its associated conspiracy theories serve as a reminder that our world is full of mystery and intrigue, whether real or imagined, and that's a world well worth exploring. After all, where would we be without a little mystery in our lives? There you have it, folks. From the construction of the largest airport in the United States by total land area, to the intricate murals and statues, all the way to the inward-facing barbed wire and the supposed reptilian base Denver International Airport has carved a unique space for itself in the annals of conspiracy theory lore. In an era where everything is a Google search away, it's refreshing and a little exciting to have some mysteries left in the world. And while we've explored some of the most popular theories about Denver Airport, remember, the truth is often elusive and in some cases far stranger than fiction. Of course, all of these theories are just that, theories. As humans, we love a good story and the Denver Airport gives us plenty to speculate on. But next time you're rushing to catch a flight, spare a thought for the possible reptilian inhabitants beneath your feet. Or better yet, take a moment to appreciate the unique artwork that sparks these fascinating conversations. And as always, thanks for watching.